Women, Power, and Leadership. This week we're going to do a quick overview of the major points we've touched on so far and then take a look at all of the nine power tools in one fell swoop. Remember at the beginning of this class we talked about when did you know you had the power to? And we talked about what the statistics are today. How much power women have in our hand if we were to use it. We talked about the discrepancies and uh, where there still are some really big injustices that we need to overcome. But we also talked about the fact that they are overcomable. And that many of the things that we that are holding women back are things that are learnable and teachable. And in fact, that's what this class is all about, isn't it? We talked about how the power is in our hands. Because after all, the business case today is just extraordinary. The companies that have more women in their upper leadership make more money. Parliaments that have more women in them make better decisions. But power unused is power useless. And there are many reasons for why women may not be using all the power in our hands, but frankly, we know there are no excuses anymore. So what we have to do is change how we think about power in two ways. First of all, we have to get a lot more intentional in how we look at the world, how we see ourselves in the world. And secondly, we literally change how we think about power from the oppressive power over to power to. And you'll recall all of the things that we learned about the difference between power over and power to. Power over makes you feel powerless. Power to makes you feel powerful. And in the end, power over is oppression. And power to is real, transformational leadership, the kind of leadership that fits in the 21st century. A leader is someone who gets something done. And for that, you need your power tools. So here we go. And by the way, uh, one of the things that you'll be doing this week is you'll be filling out a worksheet. And that worksheet will enable you to demonstrate your understanding of the power tools and how they can be applied in real life situations for yourself. And I wanted to give you this worksheet both to use as a class exercise and to keep in your own toolkit. Pull it out when you need it, when it can help you to achieve something that you want to achieve or help you clarify a goal and figure out what are the action steps that you can take to get there and how can your nine power tools help you along the way. So you'll see that in this week's assignments and there's a blog set up for it. What I'm asking you to do is I would like for each of you to make sure that you read at least one other person's worksheet and give that person the best of your feedback. Help them, coach them, critique them, give them suggestions as to how they can strengthen their goals, their action steps, and their use of the power tools, or ask questions to help them clarify. And you'll get the same yourself in return. So here are the nine power tools, the nine ways that you can embrace your power. You might want to pull out your crib sheet, by the way, uh, the one that I gave you early in the class. It's still sitting right there in the uh, 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 class instructions. You can download it if you haven't already and just uh, keep it beside you as we go through the power tools. The first power tool, know your history and you can create the future of your choice. Pretty straightforward. If you don't know where you've come from, it's hard to figure out who you are and where you want to go. Second power tool, define your terms first before someone else defines you. You recall the first exercise that we did in this class where I ask you, who do you think you are? And you defined yourself. Perhaps you've learned a few things over the course of this class and you might want to uh, add some further comments to your posting, who do you think you are? And meanwhile, 
uh, you certainly know that um, that defining your own terms is what we're doing when we change our definition of power from power over to power to. Use what you've got, power tool number three. You'll recall the story of Lema Gabawi, the now Nobel Prize winner, but the woman who started the very successful movement in Liberia to remove the dictator because she was so concerned she didn't want her children to be taken off to become child soldiers. And so she mobilized the market women to stage a strike, basically, until they were able to get the dictator removed. They had very little power. They had no money. They just used what they had. Embrace controversy, power tool number four. Remember the seven C's of controversy that we discussed. Very powerful power tool. If that's not a redundancy, pardon me. An English teacher wouldn't like that, that I used the word twice in one sentence. But, you know, our tendency is to back away from controversy. I hope you now understand how controversy can be your friend and how it's worth the risk to take it and ride into its wave and use its energy to propel you forward. It gives you a platform to do that. Power tool number five, Carpe the Chaos. It's on the, it's on the boundaries where innovation occurs. It's when things are in chaos that people are able to think new thoughts, to see the world differently, and to come up with new ways of doing things. So again, it's the human, human impulse to back away from chaos when really we ought to use it as the opportunity to think differently, solve problems differently, do things anew, and frankly, find opportunities that we had never seen before. To do all these things, we got to wear the shirt, power tool number six. And when we wear the shirt, it helps us to create a movement. Creating a movement doesn't necessarily mean walking with picket signs or creating a big social movement. The three, these three principles of movement building that I learned on the front lines of a social movement can just as well be used in business. Um, in civic life, in, in, any, in your home, in just about any place. They're very simple, but not necessarily easy. Be a sister or a brother. Reach out to someone else who needs help. Ask for help when you need it. Don't let yourself get isolated. Have the courage to wear that shirt. Put your convictions forward. Talk about the problem. Put it on the table. And then when you put those two things together, sister and courage, with a plan, a specific plan, get your facts together, get your, get your people together, and you can really, literally change the world. Power tool number eight, employ every medium. Use the power of your voice. And since women are 60% of social media users, we have an enormous opportunity to get our point of view out there. And uh, you remember you did the uh, project where you looked at good and bad media images of women and coverage of women, well, we can actually shape the media that shapes us. And the ninth power tool, tell your story. As Dr. Seuss says, no one is youer than you. Your story is your power. Your story is your truth. And there's nothing more likely to be able to make the change you want than your authentic story. It just simply is that powerful. So I ask you at the beginning of the class to imagine what would the world be like if women and men held equal positions of power and leadership? Have you had any insights? Would you give the same answer? Or, or do you see things a little differently now? Well, you're going to solve a problem in your last class assignment, the group assignment, the group project, in which you're going to solve the problem of how do we get women to parity. So I want to close with a story that I want to share with you. 
you know, there comes a moment when you're writing a book when you have to give it up. You have to give it to your publisher. It has to go to print. You can't change anything else. So I was at that point with no excuses. And in fact, I was already about a month late turning it in. And I knew I had to press send at 8 o'clock the next morning. And I stayed up almost all night rereading the manuscript one more time to see what stupid mistake I must have made that I hadn't caught. Well, as luck would have it, there was one of those, one of those uh, mistakes that spell check cannot save you from. You probably had them. The word was supposed to be parity, but somehow it had gotten changed to a party. So the moral of that story is that when we have reached parity, when men and women do hold equal positions of power and leadership, we're going to have a big party. And I hope that all of you will be there to join me. Thank you.